Speaking of which, so it goes back to the big lie. When we were in Hawaii and we went to the federal building to protest the protesters who were demanding no more homeland security, no more ICE, $1,500 as a universal uh, basic income per month, uh, they didn't allow us in the building. And while we were waiting outside for our turn, someone was sent to say that we were Bosnian terrorists uh, <laughs> at the federal building, you know, hoping we get tased and tackled. Um, again, this kind of goes back to the obfuscating of the left. Historically, is this something that you cover in your book, the tactics of just accusing your opposition of doing what, what you're doing? Well, hold on, we're really fa Mussolini. No, 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 Mussolini was right wing. You're fascists. You know, the, to someone just looking at American politics, the most obvious analogy to the, the fascists would be these Antifa thugs, right? These right. guys wear costumes, they have masks, they carry weapons, they use intimidation and violence. But, but I think that they are less threatening than the more powerful figures, which would be something like the Hollywood studio bosses. Now, here's what I mean. The, the Nazis had a term called Gleichschaltung. The term actually means coordination. But what the Nazis wanted to do was get all sectors of, of society into sync with Nazi ideology. Nobody's allowed to get out of line, uh, out of step, so to speak. Uh, and here we see in academia, in media, in Hollywood, that you have to toe the line. Uh, the reason we have a secret organization of conservatives that uh, you know meets in secret and sh shows up in disguise <laughs> is those guys know that these people have the power to hurt you. Yeah. Uh, and so that we have Gleichschaltung in America, it's called political correctness, and it's enforced by the left. It isn't just guys on the street in Berkeley. It's very fa powerful people who control our cultural institutions. But the beauty of that is that now, and I think even more so than two years ago with Cenk, um, you know, considering the money that he, he got from, uh, from Qatar and the money they got from a former Republican governor, his name slips my mind, um, the left sort of invested in new media and the right has caught up. And now that they've caught up, not necessarily in funding, we're still obviously uh, nowhere near the Young Turks funding, but... It's more of a form of ideas, and that's how you're seeing more young people be becoming conservative. Final question here, because we've covered this a lot, talking about Bernie and Hitler and national socialists, the Nazi roots. How much, for people who will say, that's hyperbolic, how much of your title, The American Left, Their Nazi Roots, is used to get people to read the book versus it being a very literal comparison that you're willing to defend? No, it's, uh, Stephen, it's an absolutely literal comparison. And let me say it very briefly this way. Hitler got three of his most destructive genocidal ideas, either from American progressives or from the Democratic Party. Uh, Hitler got his idea for Lebensraum, the whole notion of throwing the Slavs, the Poles, the Eastern Europeans, the Russians off their land, resettling it with German families, uh, and enslaving the people who remained. Hitler specifically said, I got this from the Jacksonian Democrats. Right. By the way, there's a whole body of historical scholarship that supports this. I'm not saying anything that mainstream his historians reject. Here's the key difference. They don't blame the Democratic Party. They try to put the blame on America. Hitler mm. got his ideas from America as though he's been reading the Declaration of Independence. No, <laughs> he's specifically getting his ideas you know, from the, 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 the eugenicists, the progressives around Margaret Sanger. They had talked not just about forced sterilization, but one of them came up with a blueprint for what he called lethal chambers yeah. to euthanize people. The Nazis went, great idea. Let's use carbon monoxide gas and long before the final solution for the Jews, uh, Hitler was, was, was killing off the sick, the disabled, the so-called imbeciles, uh, the unfit. Yeah. Uh, and he got that idea straight from American progressors. So I could go on, but you can see, this is not just Jonah Goldberg. I'm not just talking about liberal fascism in some vague ideological sense. Right. I'm talking about the actual schemes that the Nazis derived from America this was Hitler and the Nazis implemented in Nazi Germany. That's a perfect, that's what I was looking for in an answer, to stick the landing, because so many people ask us that question when we draw that comparison, when we take quote for quote and we do the videos. Nope, it's an absolute literal comparison, and we're not misusing the word literally. We mean a quite literal <laughs> comparison in policy. And uh, as LeVar Burton said, you don't have to take my word for it, only it's not a six-year-old with a coloring book out. It's, it's Dinesh D'Souza, a gentleman and a scholar. 